breathe in one, two, three. Remaining calm. Just hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, While three, restrained. Four. It relaxes me. It kind of helps me work through my anxiety. Tyler Himmelsteep calls his experience torture. There were times where I didn't think I could even get through it. Um, and like I, I, I was afraid that at some point I would just like go into shock. In July 2020, Tyler was in the San Carlos Correctional Facility in Pueblo serving a nine-year sentence for assaulting his ex-girlfriend. I hurt her pretty badly, and um, I'll have to live with it for the rest of my life. There's not a day that goes by that I don't regret it. He says he's diagnosed with bipolar disorder and can be a danger. Sometimes I would resort to banging my head pretty bad. It would split my head open all the way to the skull, and um, I would usually get like 12 to 15 stitches at a time. Like on his first day at San Carlos, Tyler said after returning from the hospital, he was placed in clinical four-point restraints. So you're basically just restrained like this for hours and hours. It's a practice only done at San Carlos and three other Department of Corrections facilities. A practice under scrutiny by attorney Megan Baker. Sure. So um, I've been looking into the conditions related to the treatment of people with mental illness in the Department of Corrections. Baker is with Disability Law Colorado and is working on a report regarding the use of four-point restraints within DOC. It's supposed to be to prevent harm, and I think that there is an understanding that it's supposed to be imminent and serious harm, but that's not how it, how it happens in actuality. Baker went to investigate the restraint cells at San Carlos, where guards use hard metal cuffs to strap people down to their beds. The closest thing I can think of as to what it looks like is like an execution chamber, to be honest. They took pictures of the place. You can see the shackles on his ankles, wrists. But drew a diagram out of respect for the person she saw restrained. Just the stark ugliness of it all. I mean, um, just as a human walking in that room, the idea of thinking of being someone that was subjected to that is, I mean, it's unimaginable to me. I had such bad bruising, welts, and slight bleeding on my wrists and ankles that they ended up uncuffing me and they put gauze around my wrists and ankles and then put the cuffs back on. Tyler estimates he was in four-point restraints for about 20 hours with an offer for a bathroom break, he says, once every six hours. To put somebody through that I believe is just torture, just blatantly torture. That was just one day. There are people who are in these rooms for weeks. The longest stretch that I'm aware of that I've been able to document in a row is 39 days. Baker says she found that over a two year period, DOC used four point restraints 136 times. But the length of each time, she says, is a question. The documentation that they keep is really confusing. It's a big problem because it makes harder, it, it makes it harder to uh, let people know the excessive amounts of time that you're in there. While not providing sufficient meaningful intervention for the people who really need treatment, not restraint. Treatment. This is being done, they say, to people who are mentally ill. And you put them in restraints, and after long enough, they will um, start fighting the restraints and start exhibiting negative behavior, just even a normal person, I believe, would. To make things worse, they say once restrained, DOC does not make it clear what it takes to get released. They don't give you clear criteria for when you're going to come off. And so there's also just no sense of control. You get into a downward spiral of abuse that you can't escape, you know, and um, that's what leads to people being put in restraints for such excessive amounts of time. Now on parole, Tyler says he's stable. Got my clozapine. Taking his medication regularly, going on long walks to de-stress and working on a lawsuit against the mental health providers who kept him in restraints. My name is Tyler Himmelsteeb and I have a severe mental illness. I'm bipolar. He even testified at the Capitol, working with lawmakers on proposing a new law to mandate the use of soft restraints like vinyl, more frequent checks on someone in four-point restraints, a cap on how long someone can be restrained each day, and clear criteria on how to get out. I'm sharing my story because I don't want this to happen to anyone else. The Department of Corrections did not offer any comment except to say it is working with legislators. Society is judged by how we treat our most vulnerable. Baker's soon to be published report is part of the effort to create new law. Why we're doing this, why we're getting this out there because, you know, people in facilities, the people that I work with are, are often the people who have the least voice. 
Um, they're forgotten about. People don't even know that the facilities they're in exist. They do now. Fighting for uh, the change of laws regarding four-point restraints in jails and prisons has given my life a lot of purpose, you know, and, and it's just an honor to be a part of it. With photojournalist Amy Hunter, Nelson Garcia, 9 News. Baker's report is expected to be published this week. She believes staffing shortages within the Department of Corrections is a factor in why four point restraints are being used for long periods of time. Boulder Democrat Judy Amabile is sponsoring the bill to change prison regulations. After multiple interview requests, DOC Public Information Officer Annie Skinner sent a statement tonight saying the restraints only used in clinical settings are closely monitored in order to protect people from hurting themselves or others.